Hi guys, this is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make the Delaney Velvet Cardigan. Um, I use Bernat Velvet for this and you can find the full instructions on my blog. It's lakesideloops.com. There you'll see the yardage, the stitch count, everything you need to know and the full instructions for sizes extra small all the way up to 5XL. So this video tutorial will just be sort of an example of the trickier parts of the pattern. I'll show you how to seam everything together, um, any parts that you might have questions about, but for the full instructions, you will need to go to the blog. So the pattern is broken up into four sections. The cardigan has two front panels, then a back panel, two sleeves, and then I show you how to seam it all together. I'm going to show you an example of how to make the front panels, and that will help you to make all the rest of the sections. And then I'll show you how to seam everything together. So for the front panel, you'll see on the pattern it says chain 79. I'm going to chain 31 because I'm gonna make a, a smaller version of the front panel just to save time in this video tutorial. So you guys go ahead and chain 79. I'm gonna chain 31. All right, so I've got my chain of 31, or in your case, 79. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain from my hook. So not this one, but this one. So that's one slip stitch. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the next five chains. So I should have six slip stitches all together. All right, so now that you've completed those slip stitches, this is going to be the cuff of your front panel. So this will be the bottom of the sweater. It'll look almost like a little ribbed cuff um, or trim on your cardigan. Now we're going to jump into our repeated section. We're gonna chain one, skip one stitch, and half double crochet in the next stitch, and we're gonna do that six times. So I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna skip this next stitch, and I'm gonna half double crochet into the next stitch. Now I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and half double crochet into the next stitch. And again, we're going to do this six times. So until you've completed six half double crochets. Okay, so now that I've repeated that six times, I've got six holes and six half double crochets. We're going to jump ahead to the next step, which is to do 12 half double crochets or half double crochet in the next 12 stitches, I should say, or chains. And you're just gonna repeat this until you get to the end of your row. You should finish on these 12 half double crochets. That should be the last section of your row. So I finished my section of 12 half double crochets and I wanted to point something out to you. If you're someone who goes back and counts, like most of us do, you're going to need 13 half double crochets in a row because when you finished your section of chain one, skip one, half double crochet, you ended on a half double crochet. So when you count your 12 half double crochets, you're going to actually have 13 in a row. One of them is from this section of chain one, skip one, half double crochet. So I have 13 half double crochets here because I'm including this half double crochet from this section. But it could be really easy to, to think this is part of this grouping and count 12 and think you're done, but you should have 13 if you're counting this half double crochet that comes after your last hole. I hope that makes sense and that that's helpful to you. Uh, for row two, we're gonna chain two and we're gonna turn. So one side of our piece is going to be sort of a regular stacking. And then this end where we're doing the slip stitches and now on this side we're going to be doing a single crochet into the back loop. This side's going to be smaller. So it's gonna be kind of tapered on one end. And that's gonna create a really great shape when we wear our sweater. So this end's going to be half double crochets. And then this end will be the cuff. And this is the slip stitch on one side and then the single crochet into the back loop on the other side and it creates a cuff and it's kind of tapered. It's cinched in more than the half double crochet end. So this will be the bottom of our cardigan. 
this ribbed look and then this will be up at the top by our shoulders. That will all make more sense if you're also looking at the written pattern on the blog because there are pictures there as well to sort of give you a better visual of what the finished panels look like and what the finished cardigan looks like. So row two, I've chained two, I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna half double crochet in the next 12 stitches. So I've half double crocheted in the first 12 stitches, so not including my chain, I have 12 stitches. And now I'm going to begin the repeat that's a chain one, skip one, half double crochet. So chain one, I'm gonna skip this stitch and I'm gonna half double crochet into the hole. So you're just gonna put your hook right into the hole, grab the yarn, and pull it back around, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So I went right into that instead of going into the, the chain. So chain one, skip one, which is this stitch, and half double crochet into the hole. And we're gonna do this six times. All right, so I finished, sorry about that. So I finished this repeat. I've got six holes and six half double crochets. You're going to repeat the sections of 12 half double crochets and then the chain one, skip one, half double crochet in the hole six times until you get to the end or toward the end of your row. You should have six stitches remaining. So if you're unsure where to dive into this next stitch, you can start at the end and count backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So my next stitch is gonna go right here and we're going to be doing a single crochet into the back loop of this stitch. So sorry, back loop, single crochet. I almost did a slip stitch there. So into the back loop, single crochet and this is going to because these stitches are smaller than the half double crochet it's going to sort of shrink down this end of our piece and it'll flow really nicely when we're wearing it all right so now for row three we're gonna chain one we're gonna turn and we're gonna slip stitch in the back loop of the next six stitches so again, this is giving us a nice ribbed, tapered cuff. Two more. All right, now we are going to chain one, skip one, half double crochet into the hole. So we're gonna skip this one, chain one, and half double crochet into the hole. If you hear that buzzing sound in the background, I'm not sure if it's picking up on the camera or not. Um, as most, like most of you, my children are home right now. And uh, that's a remote control car. <laughs> They're doing a pretty good job though of being really quiet while mommy makes a quick video. So from here, I think you've got it. It's just the same repeats over and over again. One end is going to be a ribbed section. That's the slip stitch and single crochets in back loops. And the other end is just going to be half double crochets. And repeating this, you'll have a nice front panel section. You have to make two of these. Then there's the back panel section, which is again, constructed the same way. And then I'm gonna show you the sleeve, it's a little bit different. All right, so I've got a finished sleeve section here to hopefully give you a better visual of what I mean by a tapered end. So this end 
comes in more. This is the end that's tapered. This is the cuff. And this is the end that's just half double crochets. So it's pretty straight. With the sleeve, the only difference is that the cuff is only five stitches instead of six. And both sides are slip stitches into the back loop. So there's no single crochets. All right, so now we're getting into the seaming part. And I had to sort of squish these up so I could try to get them into the frame. But the cuff ends are over here. And this is the flatter half double crochet ends. This is the part we're going, where we're going to attach the front panels to the back panel. So this is the back panel, front panel one, front panel two. So this is exactly the halfway point across this end of the back panel. And we're going to be matching them up row by row and slip stitching them together. You're, you're going to do about two slip stitches per no, sorry, one slip stitch per row to seam this front panel to the back panel and then continue on and seam the second front panel to the back panel. All right, so as you can see, I've started to slip stitch the back panel and the front panel together, or, or one of the front panels. This is what it will look like on the side that I'm working on. And then on the other side, this is what you'll see. So almost seamless. You could use a darning needle and sew these together instead of slip stitching. I just find slip stitching easier sometimes because I already have the crochet hook and the yarn. I don't have to really get anything extra. So I'm just finding loops to put my hook into and then grabbing my yarn and pulling it through both panels and then through the loop that was on my hook. And I'm making sure as I go that my rows are lining up. So you can kind of see a line here and it continues over to here. There's kind of a line there that continues over to here and so on and so on. As I go down, I want to make sure that these stay lined up so that I don't run out of room to attach my second panel. This should end exactly halfway down. So this attachment should end exactly halfway down my back panel. I should be done slip stitching when I've reached the halfway point of my back panel. All right, so I made it to the middle of my back panel. So I'm working on the size, adult size medium, which means my back panel was 52 rows. So this is row 26, which happens to be how many rows I have of my front panel. Now I'm going to start attaching my second front panel to my back panel the same way. So I'm just gonna continue on slip stitching, attaching my second front panel to my back panel all the way down. Okay, so now that I've slip stitched my two front panels to my back panel, I'm going to flip my cardigan like this, and I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, so starting at the bottom of my cardigan at the cuff, I'm going to be slip stitching up the side so that I'm joining my front panel and my back panel together on the sides. And on the blog, I have exactly how many stitches you have to slip stitch together. For the adult medium, it's 57 stitches. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna slip stitch all the way up 57 stitches. All right, so I've got my youngest here with me and I've sewn up or slip stitched up 57 stitches along the side of my cardigan and now what remains, you're going to have a hole here, and that's where we're going to attach our sleeve. So at the top of both sides of your cardigan, you'll have a hole. Ta-da! <laughs> I can't see your hands. Do you want to put them here? Say ta-da. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, so just like with our cardigan, we're going to be slip stitching the side of our sleeve together. So you just take your sleeve, fold it in half. I start at the cuff and I slip stitch all along the side here to make it into a finished sleeve. Ta-da! <laughs> all right, so I've got my cardigan here. My slip stitch seam is still on the outside, so I haven't flipped it right side out yet. And same with my sleeve. Um, my slip stitch seam is right here. And I'm gonna make sure that my seam is pointing down toward my cuff so that when I'm wearing my sleeve, it's sort of, the seam is sort of under my arm. And we're going to attach the top of our sleeve, so the, the end that's not cuffed, to this hole that we left 
in the side of our cardigan. So this part's going to be a little bit tricky because you're attaching stitches to rows. Um, so you might want to uh, sew this together. Definitely you might want to use some stitch markers to help you sort of map it out before you start seaming it together to make sure that you don't end up with any parts that are cinched more than others and that it's evenly placed around the hole. All right, so thank you for watching this video tutorial. We hope that you enjoyed the pattern as much as we enjoyed making it. I say we because again, my little one's helping me today. Bye, take care. Bye.